What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Denise Salcedo with Instinct Culture, and I am super excited because right now with me, my guest, the librarian, Peter Avalon. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. No, I'm super excited to have you. You know, I got to tell you, uh, Peter, the reason why I brought you in here, I was like, you're one of the coolest people that I have met while working in the industry. And to see you succeed has been super awesome. So I was like, we got to bring him in and we got to talk about it, you know? I'll take it. Thanks for having me. This is fun. I like this this room. It's, it's, uh, it fits you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's just kick it off right off the bat, okay? You have been working really hard in the in the wrestling industry. You know, you've earned your stripes. You've been making the rounds. And now you are about to be seen on a national platform with AEW. What is going through your mind right now? I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of the AEW uh, project that they have going on. They are building something uh, completely new and completely competitive to what's going on uh, in the current market. And I'm excited to be a part of, the, of, of something brand new. So how did the opportunity come about for you? I know you've had relation I know you've had you've been friends already with the Young Bucks for a while, Scorpio Sky, you named them. But how exactly did you get brought on board? When opportunity knocks, the, uh, you answer. I answered when the opportunity knocked and I killed it. That's just the way it goes. Like it's funny because they say you spend all this time preparing so that when your moment comes, you know, you knock it out of the park. Absolutely. That's what you do. You prepare and you stay prepared. That's awesome. Okay. So now with AEW, when it first got started, you know, they had all this buzz and they still have all this buzz, correct? So what were your thoughts when you first heard that the company was going to become a thing that, you know, people were in the works and that it was probably going to happen. And then out of nowhere, it's happening. Really? When the announcement happened, I was like, this is this is amazing. I'm excited for for the people that I know associated with it, and 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 for all the opportunity that's being given to new people that might not have been given these opportunities. It's it's an incredible opportunity, and I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of it. I can't say it enough. It's 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 nuts. It's nuts. Did you think that you would be a part of it? Like, did you envision yourself like prior when the announcement was made? Absolutely. I I wanted. This is brand new, and this is incredible opportunity, and I wanted to play. That's awesome. Now, what was it like being a part of Double or Nothing in Las Vegas? There was so much energy. I was at the event, and even like from the moment that you get there, it was just like this really energetic thing. The posters up at the MGM Grand, the MGM Grand, the whole deal. I loved it. It, it was it was great to be a, that. My first show happened to be almost like next door to me. It's a, it's just a few hour drive to get from LA to, to Las Vegas. So it was great. I, I loved it. It was great. What was the vibe like for all the guys? Like what was the vibe backstage? Positive and nervous. A lot of these guys, uh, I am no stranger to national television. I have, uh, my, most of my career has been nationally televised. Um, but a lot of these people in the back there, this was their first opportunity at being uh, on this on a platform like this on mean national television and 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 to be seen by this many people so they were nervous but they were excited and everybody was excited and and that radiates hard when 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 everybody is radiating positivity everybody feels it and everybody was excited it's a good nervous you know yeah so I was going to ask you about that what were your thoughts like you know moments before you had your first segment on there like what was running through your head with Double or Nothing, we filmed uh, the segment the day before, and then um, it played it on the on the show. So we watched it, and it was like it was goosebumps. That's so cool because like when I saw it happen, I was just like, "Oh my god, it's Peter!" Like that is so awesome, and to sort of see it play out was really cool. So now you had your first match at Fight for the Fallen against Sunny Kiss. What were your thoughts going into that match? Same thing. It was it was a different kind of a different set of nerves. I've been there now, but now this is my my first opportunity to showcase uh, a little bit of what I can do physically in the ring. I've just been in a role where I've been in my sweater talking. Now I'm in my robe and down in my gear, and I ha I'm gonna fight uh, somebody as amazing as Sunny Kiss. I don't know what to expect out of Sunny Kiss, and he didn't know what to expect out of me. So it's like a fun learning experience, especially when you're working with a new competitor. Absolutely, it was a lot of fun. What about the venue? Because I thought the venue was really cool. What was that like? That was, that was something. It was outside, so it was it was. It, it, we were we started the show and it was daytime, and then it got night. It just became nighttime, and then the the vibe, the energy changed as the day 
ended of of uh of the room so it was it was cool to see that play out and it was it was amazing to be there live in front of that crowd especially when i told them to shush and they <laughs> and they seemed to not like it very much exactly and so it's you know it's cool because especially with your character the librarian it sort of demands like this presence and then people are automatically like listening like okay you want us to shut up that never goes well with a wrestling audience right absolutely they're gonna talk if they want to talk they'll talk exactly okay so now once the weekly shows commence what do you hope viewers see from you specifically i think they see me rise through the ranks and become the man at AEW. how did the librarian character come about uh, they they had an up they had an idea for this character and when they had a and when they heard this idea the first person they thought of was was me. <laughs> so you were pitched this idea then. Mm-hmm. And what did you think when you first heard the pitch? Where you're like, okay, I can roll with it. What were you thinking? I'm all in. I'm all in. All in. There you go. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about earlier. I mentioned that you've already had you've you've known the Young Bucks for a while now. So when they first, you know, with the announcement of AEW and knowing that they were going to be behind this big project, how did it feel for you to see them take on this role, especially you know, given the history? Uh, we really just know each other. There's not really much history there, as uh, besides the fact that we come both are from Rancho Cucamonga, and. Uh, I met them very early on in my wrestling career back in 2007. Uh, in my original training, uh, they had come through to roll around with uh, the trainers as well, and then we just they they helped kind of uh, they were in the, they were in the line as we were doing drills, and then you know it was kind of uh, meeting them early on, and then you know staying in contact throughout the shows uh, as as they uh, went a different way. Um, so it's just kind of just staying, staying connected. Um, that's really. That's the key. That's Stay it. connected. Stay connected. That's awesome. Okay, so now you know you, we talked about your match with Sunny Kiss, but who are some of the other AEW talents that you would still like to work with, or hope, or you maybe you don't have your eye on? I would like to work MJF. You know, Kip Sabian. Uh, there's a lot of talent there uh, that I think we could showcase a lot of stuff that we do. Uh, John Moxley. Yeah. I'll throw it out there. I'll tell him to shush. We'll see what we can if we can fight. Make it work. You know, that's the cool thing. One of my favorite things in particular is when promotions, you know, mix these guys up. You know, people that you haven't seen work together yet. You know, as a fan, it's pretty exciting to sort of see that mixture of, you know, of talent and see what people can pull through. Okay, so now let's go ahead and jump in. So regular television starts October 2nd on TNT. What are you most looking forward to? What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about the television. I'm excited about going to different places and uh, making television in different cities every week. That's what I'm excited about. I know. It's really cool, especially the fact that they're going to be touring and they've already been selling out. Like, that must have been pretty excited to hear. Like, yes, like people are really excited about this and they're going to be showing up at the shows. Absolutely. I like making television. I've been making television for a long time with now Championship Wrestling from Arizona. And to be a part of a brand new television with AEW, it's, it's fantastic. We are making television, every, brand new television every week. It's, it's exciting. It'd be awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about, you know, earlier we mentioned again that, you know, you've had a long career now. So you went from, your character has evolved. You went from pretty to professional to the producer and now the librarian. How have these changing characters sort of helped you in the ring as a performer, as a wrestler? I like trying to portray different characters uh, and they all end up being a tweak on the same thing. So they all kind of, They all kind of, you know, intertwine. You just not only came back from China, we kind of talked about this briefly earlier on. You wrestled and produced with Middle Kingdom Wrestling. So wrestling in China is really just starting out. You know, they don't have a history or anything like that. Do you think that wrestling will eventually become a viable entertainment in China? I think it could be eventually. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take them figuring out what it is. What was your experience like in China? Was it different? Like, how does it compare to other places, cities, and other places that you've gone to wrestle? It was nuts. I loved it. I, I like I like brand new stuff, and it was a completely new experience to me. Uh, the food, the people, uh, just like the way they go about their day, and just existing. I didn't hide in my in my hotel room. I went out every day to explore the city the best I could. Go to the gym, go to restaurants, and I didn't speak a word. They didn't speak. Uh, <laughs> few, few few people in between uh, were able to speak to me, uh, which was which was nice and th- uh, helpful. 
uh, lady at a bank, lady at a restaurant, things like that. Um, that's about it. It was, it was wild. Uh, walking in the street, I felt like Frogger because you're just, you're, you're moving. The cars are not stopping for you. They're just going to go around you and you got to time it, time it right to not get it. It was, it was something I love. Like don't die. I I loved it. I loved every bit of it. (laughs) And was that your first or second time in China or how many times have you gone already? Uh, The the Hollywood show has gone uh, twice now, technically with me, with me just going. The first time I wasn't on the trip, but this, this time it was just, it was just me. Uh, We also had Ray Lynn out there too. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That's really cool because like, you know, again, like I said, there's not much to go off with China. So you kind of go, you do what you, you know, and, you know, hopes that it sticks, you know? It's a big country and like every part, it's different. Like all the parts are different from each other. So it's like, I don't know if WWE has ran somewhere else. We're running completely different area, but there's people there who are aware of it because of media. It's wild. It's just, it's such a giant different place <laughs> you know, and imagine like you know if wrestling becomes something eventually in china you know that is going to be huge for the business because again more people more viewers more money <laughs> you know plain and simple all right so now obviously aw talent is wrapping up their indie dates for you how do you feel sort of closing this chapter of your career and moving on to the next thing i'm it's bittersweet because there's other there's other stuff I'm doing too, uh, the tag team PP Ray. I don't know if I'll be able to dance with my main man Ray Rosas anymore, uh, and that's that's unfortunate for me. You guys are so fun. You guys have such good chemistry. But maybe we can see that down the line. I think so. I yeah. think so. I I, I don't want to say goodbye. I think it's just till we meet again. Exactly. Well, you never know. Hey, AEW is really focusing on tag team wrestling. Never know. Maybe we will see Ray Roses in the future, PP Ray in the future of AEW. You never know what's going to happen these days. Yeah, you never know. Never know. All right. So now, Peter, I want to thank you so much for this interview. But before we wrap it up, I always like to do a fun lightning round game with my guests where I put them on the spot and make them answer questions as fast as they can. So it's just 10 questions. Whatever comes to your mind, you go for it. All right. Here we go, guys. Lightning round with the librarian, Peter Avalon. Question one, favorite book? Oh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Question two, favorite dish from China? Oh, oh, these these little ribs. They didn't have very much meat on them, but it was very tasty and very spicy. Question three, does the Big Mac taste better here or in China? The same. It's the same. It's the same. It gives me the same indigestion, and it's still delicious. Thank you, McDonald's. (laughs) Question four, weirdest or most unique wrestling show you've wrestled on? Oh, pro- pro- I would say China. Probably the, probably the Chinese one. That's awesome. Question five, person you've been most excited to wrestle? Ray Rosas. Question six, best workout music? Ooh. Oh, uh, I love Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode. I always, I always go 80s. I was, I was like, yes, I stumped him. <laughs> Question seven, most used emoji? Oh, the rolling eyes. Question eight, favorite movie? Anchorman. Question nine, best way to spend a plane ride? Asleep. (laughs) And lastly, question 10, favorite book genre? Oh, can I just say fiction? Fiction works. Fiction works. All righty, guys, there you have it. That is our interview with Peter Avalon. Peter, before we go, where can people follow you on social media? Follow me on Instagram, PPA. All day. I'm on Twitter at twitter.com slash Pavilon. You can also follow me on my website, peteravalon.com. I swear I'll update it, Jose, please. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys, don't forget AEW on TNT, October 2nd. You can see the librarian, Peter Avalon, every week, again, on AEW, October 2nd, TNT. All right, as always, guys, don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel for more interviews. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at underscore Denise Salcedo. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.